everyone. Welcome to Jolly Molly TV. Today we are going to start Kimberbell's next adorable project. This is the Two Scoops Bench Pillow Project. Isn't this adorable? Hopefully you can see it. It is adorable. It has milkshakes, ice cream cart, ice cream sandwiches, ice cream truck. And we're going to do this as a bench pillow just like it's shown on this project. So we have three potential components that you can purchase to do this project. You don't have to have all three, but I'll walk through the ones that you definitely need and the other ones that I would highly recommend if you're able to do so. So we're gonna walk through all of these three components and you can select which you would like to purchase for this project. Now, I have to give a huge thank you and a shout out to our sponsor for this video, which is My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop. They were so generous and sent me this set so that I can show you how to make this project. So if you need any of these pieces as we go along here and I describe them to you, I'll put a link down below. You can go to My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop and you can purchase all of these pieces plus any stabilizers you might need for this project, which we'll go through later as well. But they are the source for all things Kimberbell. So let me just take a second right here and let's go to their website and I'll show you the areas where you can find all three of these pieces so you know where to go get it. Because my girlfriend's quilt shop, they have excellent customer service. They're wonderful and quick sending out the product and they help you if you have any questions as well with any other projects. So let's go take a look at their website for a second. Okay, so this is the website, mygirlfriendsquiltshop.com, and this is our homepage. So all we have to do, oh, that's another project that we're going to be doing. Cup of cheer. Can't wait for that to come out too. So all we have to do is in this area right here, I just type in two scoops. Okay, it's the fastest way to bring up what we're looking for. And it's going to come up with a nice thread kit if you need threads that will correspond with the piece. Or you can do here, click on this one, and this one will bring up the that CD that I told you. That's basically one of the necessities of this project. It's a two scoop bench pillow machine embroidery pattern for $39.95. So it's not a pre-order now because it will ship in April. We're past April now. So you can go ahead and add that to your cart to so look at all these cute pictures. I can't wait to do this. So this is going to be a good place to get your CD. <gasps> look at the ice cream sandwiches. Yeah, I love this project already. Okay, so that's going to be where you can get the CD for $39.95. Then I'm going to go back one and I'm going to pull up the embellishment kit. And they have the embellishment kit in stock as well. Here it is. We showed that earlier. And that one, let me go back real quick. That was $34.99. Add to cart. Okay. And then here is the fabric kit. It's a combo. Fabric kit and the embellishments together. Doesn't look like they have the fabric kit by itself. It's combined with the embellishments. Okay. Okay, right now it's it's temporarily out of stock. They should be getting more in. I know it's it's been a project that has high demand. So they had it in, but they're now temporarily out of stock, but they will be getting it back in. But this is a combo where you can get the embellishment kit and the fabric kit for this project. So check back with them and they should get it back in stock shortly. So this is where you can go to purchase those items mygirlfriendsquiltshop.com. All right, so let's go back to the table. Okay, so now let's walk through each of the pieces that you either need or can purchase if you'd like to, to do this project. The one piece that you do need, no matter what, is this CD for the Kimberbell Two Scoops. And let me actually open this up a little bit so it doesn't shine so much. Pardon the crinkle here, because I know sometimes it's hard to see the glossy pictures in the light. So we'll crinkle for two seconds here. 
this will make it a little bit easier to see on camera. Okay, crinkle gone. All right, there you go. It's still a little shiny, but you can see the picture much clearer. Okay, so this CD is something that you will need to be able to do the embroidery designs on your machine. And it comes in all the different formats, the ART, the DST, EXP, HUS, JEF, PES, PES, VIP, VP3, and XXX. SVG files are also included if you'd like to cut some of these designs on your electric cutting machine, like your Scan and Cut or your Cricut. This is so cute. This project you can actually make with a five by seven hoop. If you have larger hoops, it would be a lot easier because you can do it in one hooping, but it can be done on a five by seven for most of these blocks on a single hoop. And then there might be one like the ice cream truck might be a double hoop um, the milkshakes might be a double hoop, but they do provide instructions to how to do split hooping. So this project is going to be so cute. The back of this CD will also have show the fabrics that if you'd like to purchase, you can buy to do this project exactly as it is shown in the picture. But if you're going to do the embroidery version of this, you need this CD for machine embroidery that will help you stitch out these designs. Again, My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop has this, so you can order directly from them. Okay, so that's the piece you do need. The piece that I highly recommend is the embellishment kit. This kit just makes Kimberbell's projects pop beyond what a normal project would be because they give you the coolest accents to be able to add to this project that just make it beyond cute. And I say cute a lot, but it's true. So let's take a look at the back here and I'm just gonna walk through and read what we have in here, okay? We have some assorted bugle beads, which I think is used for the ice cream sandwiches. There's some bugle beads for the ice cream here. I think it's the ice cream sandwiches. Hang on. I have to look now. Yes, ice cream. There's some bugle beads that are used on the top of this ice cream right here to make it look like sprinkles. And here they are here in the package, if you can see that. We have embroidery felt in all different colors. We have sweet hydrangea, pink, sea foam, gingerbread, yellow. So one, two, three, four, five different colors of embroidery felt. Okay, in pieces that are plenty big to use on this project. You have applique glitter polka dot, applique glitter red, and applique glitter white. One of my favorite things in all the Kimberbell projects is their use of applique glitter. It's my favorite. In fact, a lot of times I have glitter left over. I will add it to other Kimberbell projects I'm doing and make things even more glittery than what they already are. So those are those three pieces right there. Very pretty. Then we have embroidery leather, which is also a very nice touch to this project. We have it in brown, pink rose, white, and silver, which you can see here is the brown, the pink rose, the whites back there, and the silver. That gives it a really rich, um, elegant touch when they put the leather in there. And again, there's plenty of pieces in this kit to do the project and have leftovers. Um, we also have some Mylar. We have some ribbon, some Sweetest Candy vinyl, which we use over the windows. Can't really see it in here, but it is a clear vinyl that gives the window the appearance of like a glass window. It's really cool. Then we have the buttons. Flexi foam and a sound button. So here are the cute buttons. You've got five of them here. There's adorable little ice cream cones. And then the sound button. This is going to be a really cool addition because it's going to play a little tune. And I'm hoping it's going to sound like an ice cream truck. It's going to be so cool. So those are the items that are available in the embellishment kit. If you can get this embellishment kit, I highly recommend it because it makes the project fun and makes the project different than everyone else who wouldn't have this embellishment kit with it because you're gonna have 3D effects that are gonna be on this pillow. 
and it just takes this project beyond a regular cute and adorable project it just takes it to that top nth degree the flexi foam is really cool too because it gives another 3d dimension to the items that it's added under and so when when your kids or you're touching and feeling a project you're going to feel these different textiles these these different elements as well so it gives the visual appeal and it also gives the uh, the touch appeal it's like ooh, this is puffy this is really cool so if you can get this embellishment kit again i highly recommend it to make your project just that much cuter so there's that then this is a fabric kit. Now this is something that we've been waiting for. Everything's finally in stock now, so you should be able to get these items fairly quickly. Uh, we got we were a little bit delayed in starting this project because we were waiting for the fabric kit, but now we've got it in hand, so you should be able to find it again. We'll check out my girlfriend's quilt shop, and you'll be able to get these pieces. Now the fabric kit will give you all of these pieces that it shows on the back of the CD already in pieces that are large enough with a little bit extra to work with your project. You can use your own stash if you like. I've done that many times with Kimberly projects and it makes it come out really cute and unique. But sometimes you want it to be exactly the way they shown it and you don't want to have to worry about figuring out which fabric to do behind here, which fabric to do behind the cart, the ice cream, etc., etc. So they've done all that for you. So this fabric kit is, I think, the cutest thing ever. You take it out here. Let's move the box aside because we're going to take a look at these fabrics. These fabrics, they have done an excellent job at as I try to get the knot out, at coming up with coordinating pieces that look great in this project. So let's walk through them. The first thing you get is this little cute card, which walks you through. It actually gives you a little um, ice cream sandwich cookie recipe. But if you turn it over, this is what I love about Kimberbell. It gives you a picture of the project. Let's see, can, can you see it there? There you go gives you a picture of the project and then it also gives you the fabric the color swatch and the number of the fabric so if you run out if you make a boo-boo which we do sometimes it's just, it's part of the game we sometimes we're perfect and sometimes we're not but if we're not and we need to purchase like a quarter of a yard a half a yard of the fabric they have put down here the exact color swatch and the fabric number so you can look up Maywood Studio and then purchase the additional fabric that you would need to finish that one piece that you are missing okay but if you want to use the fabric kit this is the best and in my mind the most economical way of getting all the fabrics you need without having to buy extra because like with this fabric here these three you only need a square you would still probably end up having to buy a quarter of a yard or whatever to get this one piece when you only need this individual square. So it's a really, in my mind, the best deal is to buy the fabric kit and then you have everything you need. You don't have to worry about trying to put it all together. So we have these really cool colors of squares. Aren't those pretty? I love pastels. That's kind of my thing. I love pinks. So when they have pinks in it, I'm all over it. Ooh, look at this. Okay, so we've got some cool green stripe fabric in this kit. Ooh, this is almost like a neon green. Very cool. Try to keep these flat here. Oh, and we have a very nice orange with like almost like a star pattern in it. Very cool. So those are those fabrics. So apparently the green stripe is going to be used for the border here. So that's why you have long stripes because it's going to be the border of the uh, bench pillow. These colors are really cool. I love these. Look at the purple. Then you have a white. White has almost like a little bit of a linen uh, texture to it. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. We had a purple version of this, I think, in candy corn. It was very fun. I like that one. And then we've got some like little chevrons. Oh, a Kind of a mint green version oh i love the pink stripe me and pink 
There's another very cool one. It almost looks like it could be used for um, like the waffle cones. Yellow polka dots. And then it repeats and goes back. So the, these are larger pieces. So those are very cool. But see how nice it is to have all the fabrics and all the pieces in one pack and you don't have to go anywhere to do it. Now these are a little bit larger pieces. So we've got a baby blue, kind of a cornflower blue. Oops. You can see this here. Oh, this is cool. This is cherries. You can't really see it on camera, but it's a white fabric and it has like literally like cherries printed on it. I like that a lot. And then we have another one almost like a hound's tooth, white with a little bit of ivory. And then lots of your yellow polka dot. So that's what comes in the fabric pack. And again, I, I think it's a really good value. You get everything you need with a little bit of extra, not a lot, but just a little bit. So in the past, like with the, when I worked on candy corn, I had a boo-boo that I made and I had just enough fabric in the kit to cut one more piece out of that to fix my boo-boo. So I highly recommend that fabric kit if you can do that. So these are the three pieces that you can get to finish this project this one is a must because you need it for the embroidered designs but then the embellishment kit and the fabric kit are options but again i highly recommend both because it'll make your life so much easier okay don't cut anything yet this next video in this series we're going to go through cutting your fabric whether you're using your stash or the kit but don't cut the embellishment kit and there's a reason why i am very practical when it comes to my embellishment kits because this is an added expense but it's so cool with all these additional pieces but i do not pre-cut these like they recommend in the instructions okay you can if you want but i will show you a technique in here if you don't cut them you can actually position the piece when we get to each block in such a way that you can almost get on most pieces, you can get additional blocks out of the same supplies. So it's great if they have you cut like a three by three square and you do something in the middle, but if you position it a little bit closer to the edge, you could probably get three out of some of them. Most of the time I can get two. I have leather and uh, glitter that are left over from other embellishment kits that I have used to make another project whether it's the same block or a different block or i've put silver leather where they didn't ask for it because i had enough left over so if you don't pre-cut these pieces and stick with me as i walk through each block with you i will show you and you'll quickly understand what i'm talking about i'm not talking about going straight to the edge i'm talking about just moving it over so that you can get just a little more out of each piece and you'll just be surprised at how much you might have left over to do something else. So that's what I've done with all my embellishment kits so far. So what you need for this project is the CD for sure, and then choose whether you'd like the embellishment kit and or the fabric kit, and order those if you'd like from My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop, because again, they were so wonderful and generous in sending me this set so that I can show you how to make this project. And I give a huge shout out, thank you, to my girlfriend's quilt shop because they're amazing. So now let me clear this table off. And now I'm going to just show you briefly what other supplies you will need to be able to do this project. Okay, so here are some basic sewing, quilting, embroidery supplies that you hopefully will have on hand already that you will need to do this project. First thing, fairly easy, I have some Scissors, these are Ulfas with have the large holes because I have big fingers, so I like to have be a little bit more comfortable. And I use these scissors for cutting my threads at the embroidery machine. I leave it right in front of my machine. And when it comes time to add thread, trim threads, this is what I use at the embroidery machine to trim those threads, okay? 
My next favorite scissors are these Havel scissors. You can actually get these at Amazon. These again have the wide finger, so they're super comfortable, but most importantly, they are curved. Okay, so when it comes to trimming batting, trimming applique, you want to use the curved scissors so that when you're trimming it, it comes up off the fabric and doesn't go poke into the fabric. These are straight and we'd be more inclined to accidentally poke the fabric. These are curved and these allow you to trim the applique very nicely, trim all your batting, do all this stuff. And you'll see me use these scissors exclusively when it comes to trimming things that we are working on still in the hoop. So these are the Havel curved scissors. I use those. You need a good seam ripper. We don't like it when it happens but you do need one. So hopefully you have a seam ripper that's comfortable for your hand. Again, I have large hands, so the little ones are kind of tiny for me to use. So I have this one, this one's by Clover, and it's big, it's nice and comfortable in my hand, and I don't ever have the issue of it falling out, uh, slipping out of my hands as I'm using it. So that's a Clover seam ripper. You need a rotary cutter. Okay, this is an Alpha. And it has the safety guards that you put into place. Any type of rotary cutter will do whatever you are most comfortable with, but you'll be using this to cut your fabrics. Okay. You need pins or clover clips. I am a person who loves clover clips because these things don't poke me. They don't cause me to bleed in my project. They're painless and they hold your item really well. You're going to be using this a lot when you're sewing together the blocks. So instead of using pins, I use clover clips for almost everything that I do because I don't get wounded when I use them. So I have my clover clips. You will also need an assortment of thread. Now I just have white out here, but you're going to need an assortment of threads that are going to kind of blend and or coordinate with the project. If you look here, you see they have the purple fabric but they have a different color purple thread around they have a baby pink thread around the pink stripes they have some silver thread black thread white thread so you just need to have an assortment of threads in the pastels or the medium pastels that would blend and or coordinate usually i just have my thread collection nearby and i say okay now i'm going to be working on this uh, awning and I need a kind of a light pink and I'll go to my drawer and I'll pull out a light pink. If you're just beginning, I would highly recommend just purchasing like a starter thread collection because that would give you an assortment of different colors of threads so that you would be able to build your collection. The more you do machine embroidery, the more threads you will accumulate to the point where you'll be like, oh, I have, I have any color thread you possibly need. I just go to my thread collection. So depending on what stage you are in your machine embroidery journey, that's what I would recommend. If you're a beginner, get like a thread starter collection that has a sort of threads in it. And then, like I said, you'll start building and start collecting as you go. And then when you get to the point where you do these projects, you won't need to buy any thread because you pretty much have whatever colors you might need. But there are some good starter sets on Amazon look for polyester thread. The reason I recommend polyester threads for embroidery is that the colors will not fade after time or after washing. Rayon threads are beautiful, but the color will fade away. So I have all polyester em embroidery thread and I've never had a problem so far, knock on wood, eh, knock on wood, with color coming off fading or any issues when the item is laundered. So I stick with solely polyester embroidery thread, even though the rayons are super pretty and they suck me in. But no, I can't, because I don't wanna do all this work. I'll go to all this money, time, energy spent doing these projects, and then six months down the road, the color starts to fade, so I don't want that. So again, I highly recommend polyester thread, just a collection to be able to do this project. Okay, I also highly rec recommend for when it gets time to sew these th blocks together that you have a quarter inch foot that has one of these little guides on it. Let's see with my hand here. It has this guide right here that you'll put the fabric up against and sew it in and it will 
help you do perfect quarter inch seams. So I highly recommend having one of those around. Okay, now we're gonna get to the rulers. There's two ways to do this. Um, you can use a regular ruler set or you can buy the Kimberbell Orange Pop ruler set. I had a massive water leak upstairs and it flooded in my kitchen and my rulers are in a set of drawers over there that is totally walled off by this humongous sheet of plastic because we are in between the rip apart the ceiling stage and the rebuild the ceiling stage. So my orange pop rulers at the moment are not accessible. They're blocked by plastic. So I will be showing you that when we get to the point where we're trimming each block. I will show you how to use the orange pop rulers and I will also show you how just to trim up your blocks using regular rulers. So this is a 3 by 12 inch. I like this size when it comes to trimming my blocks. This is another ruler which is my favorite. It's a 6 by 24 and I always have one of these on hand. This one will probably be what I use most of the time to cut the smaller pieces of fabric. This one I might need for the bigger pieces. So if you only have two rulers in your collection, these are a good two rulers to have. Now there's different companies that make rulers. I have graduated up to a quilter select for all my rulers because they have a non-slip surface on the back of them that helps it when you put just a little bit of pressure it keeps it from sliding around. These rulers are awesome. So these are the two rulers that I have on my quilter select that I use 95% of the time. But I do, again, I love them because of that non-slip backing on them. They're available at quilt stores. I don't think they're available online like Amazon. You have to look for your quilt shops to get the quilter select from but they're worth the investment because they have this wonderful non-skid backing so you don't have to put one of those handles or anything on it you can just hold it with your hand and make your rotor cutters and it's not going to go anywhere so those two size rulers i would recommend having on hand the stabilizer that they're showing on the back of this okay they're showing that you need a light mesh cutaway this is going to be for the majority of your blocks. This is going to be your embroidery stabilizer that you use for each block. And this is a 12 inch by 10 yards. This will be plenty, 12 inch wide. The blocks aren't going to be that big. So you can get this roll here. And this is a light mesh cutaway embroidery stabilizer. Again, my girlfriend's quilt shop will have this light mesh cutaway. You look at the back, it says light mesh cutaway. It'll have it listed on the back as well. A fusible backing. I don't have a sample of it here, but I use Palon 860F. There's also SF101 that you can use. And all this is, is a fusible that you're going to iron on the back of your background fabric piece. So on the ice cream piece, it's going to be this turquoise. You're going to iron this fusible on the back of that, and that just helps support the cotton, not pucker. That's the key. It doesn't pucker as long as you have a fusible backing on it. So fusible backing, either Palon 860F or an SF101. Go ahead and use that for the back of your background fabric. We'll talk about that and the video where we cut the fabric pieces but that's what they mean by fusible backing your flexi foam your flexi foam will be in the embellishment kit if you choose to purchase that so if you look here here's the embellishment kit here is your flexi foam if you're not going to buy the embellishment kit you can buy either flexi foam from my girlfriend's quilt shop or there's also something I have on my Etsy shop, which I'll put the link down below, that is a puffy foam. It comes in a, in a big set with different colors. You can use puffy foam as well. But I do like this flexi foam. It has a nice uh, consistency, nice feel to it. Bounces back. The puffy foam is more like a foam. It still will bounce back and a soft, but this stuff is a little bit softer. 
So that's what they mean by flexi foam on the back. The last item here they sell is a wash away. Yes, I say wash is wash. A wash away sticky back stabilizer. So here is the one by Kibra Bell. It says wash away sticky back embroidery stabilizer. It's 12 inches by five yards. This is also available on my girlfriend's quilt shop. If you notice the different colors, Kibra Bell has this really cool thing where they have color coded their embroidery stabilizers. So if you're looking for the light mesh cutaway, you look for this kind of a light yellow orange color. And if you're looking for the wash away sticky back stabilizer, you're going to look for one that has the blue on it and look for wash away sticky back stabilizer. This is for hard to hoop items where you can't really hoop the item and you need to stick it back to secure the item while it's stitching, but then you want it to wash away as well. Okay. This is great for organza, chiffon, anything sheer, lightweight fabric, then you can wash it away. That's what you want. So you need one roll of each of those. You won't need the whole roll, but you need to purchase or have this on hand so that you can do these projects. And I consider this as an investment because I'm going to be doing lots and lots and lots of Kibobo projects. So I know I will definitely be using these rolls up. So that's not a problem. Okay. So those are the stabilizers you need. Again, the light mesh cutaway, the fusible backing, which is either a Palon 860F or SF101, a flexi foam, which is in the embroidery kit or a puffy foam, and your wash away sticky back stabilizer. Okay. So you will also need a cutting mat. This is just a basic, uh, I think it's 24 by 18 cutting mat that fits on my table. This will be for when I am cutting my fabrics, when I'm cutting my pieces of my fusible, um, my embroidery stabilizer, my wash away stabilizer. I cut everything on this mat. When we get to the point where we are doing our cutting of the blocks, okay, there is one thing I highly recommend you having is a rotating cutting mat. And this cutting mat does exactly what it sounds like it's going to do. It rotates. So when we have our block finished, we put it on here, whether we use the orange crop rulers or a regular ruler, we're going to turn it and we're going to cut it. We're going to turn, 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 and then you can turn around and cut it. And this saves from you having to turn the block around because the block will turn as this table turns. This is awesome. I purchased this, I think, oh my gosh, two years ago, and I've already used it for like five Kimberbell projects. So this is well worth the investment for having ease when you're cutting those finished blocks. So this is a rotating cutting mat. This is actually an Olfa one as well, O-L-F-A. There's a couple other brands out there as well. Olfa is a really good brand. It's very good quality and I've had no issues with it. It is uh, 17 inches square. Okay. So if you can get one of those, I highly recommend it. Okay. One of the last tools that we're going to talk about that we need to have on hand is a bag system. Now, when we go and we load the CD and I'll do a video. The next video will be loading the CD, printing out the instructions and cutting our fabrics. But in that instruction, they're going to talk about having a bag system to sort your cut uh, fabrics, labeling them for each block. And the first Kimbo bar project I did, I used Ziploc baggies and that was okay. Then I graduated to these babies what these are and they're available on Amazon and I'll put a link down in the description below is these are what actually were manufactured for children to use like um, you could put your multiplication tables in here and then you use dry erase markers only dry erase these are by Expo dry erase don't use a regular sharpie you'll ruin these but use Expo dry erase and then you can write on them the name of your block, this is sit and stitch border block five. This is border block six. And then you slide in the fabrics 
that are for border block six and you have them there. Now because they're dry erase, they will rub off. Okay, so you can see this one's been used a lot from the sit and stitch. This was from a candy corn project. You see my threads in there. And so this is wore off a little bit, but that's why I use dry erase. So you will get a little bit of rub and wear as you use them, but you're not going to have that big of a problem. And if it starts to wear off and you go, oops, I can't tell if that's a five, you just write another five. Okay. But these, like I said, are not gone through a lot. You'll just be going, oh, I need border block six. There we go. And you pull it out and there's your fabrics. So they serve the purpose for what we use. And they're really cool because they can be reused over and over and over again. They have a little uh, grommet up here on the top that you can use a, a three ring binder. But I hesitate on that because then I'm flipping this upside down and my thought was the fabric is going to slide out. It stays in there pretty good because of the adherence to the plastic. But I don't want to have be flipping them over and then have my fabric accidentally fall out. So I choose just to use them loosely like this and just label what I need. And then I go like this. And then I actually have a bookcase that I keep them in next to the machine. I pull out the project I'm working on and they're all ready for me. These have nice stitching on them as well. I had to shop around on Amazon because some of them weren't very nicely stitched. So this is the link I'll have for you. The brand is Adore You. There's many brands out there, but I like the Adore You ones because like I said, they're nicely stitched and they're going to last me a long time. I think the set has 35 or 36 of them in there. Uh, it's more than enough to do one project with a little bit extra to do a second. I actually ended up adding a second set of these to my collection because I have actually four Kimberball projects going at one time right now. So that way I can have them all labeled, all set aside. I finish the project. I'm done with it. Like this one is candy corn. I take a paper towel or my finger, which is not the bad, and I wipe it off and it's ready for the next project. Okay. So I highly recommend having at least one set of these on hand because most people are not going to do more than one, maybe two projects at one time. You won't be crazy like me and have four going, but I do. So that's the fun of it. I love it. Okay, so this set would be really nice to have a reusable um, baggy system to identify your fabric. Okay, so those are all the basic supplies that you're going to need to do this awesome project. I hope this helped out. What we're going to do in the next video is we're going to walk through how to load the design on your machine. We're going to print out the instructions and then we're actually going to start cutting our fabrics. I've got some tips and, and tricks on some of these. We're going to cut the fabrics a little bit larger because we're going to do some background quilting and we'll talk about the background quilting as well. The background quilting is not included on the CD. They will be for sale on Kimberbell.com. They're an additional purchase. But I'm going to walk you through the options for the background quilting, the designs that are out there and everything on the website in the next video. And then I'm going to walk you through the tips and tricks of how to cut certain pieces of fabric a little bit bigger to allow for that background quilting. The instructions in this project will be specifically for if you do it without the background quilting. I'm going to be showing you how to do the background quilting on it because it's kind of like quilt as you go. It's really cool. So some of these fabrics will be cut slightly larger. So don't, if you're using the fabric kit, don't cut anything yet until we get through the next video, video number two in this project, and you see what sizes I have you cut decide whether you want to do the background quilting or not. Okay. So this is going to be a super fun project. I hope you're as excited about this as I am. And if you like this video, please click like because YouTube likes to know if people are liking the video and please subscribe to my channel. That way, you know, every time I upload a video and we've got big things planned for this channel, I'm going to be doing more Kimberbell. We have a couple more projects still to finish. We have candy corn, which is almost done. Candy cane lane. And then we've got some new exciting things coming up. 
which are going to be quilt related, quilt block related, and some sewing projects as well. So we have a lot of fun things coming up. We will always do Kimberbell, so don't worry. We're just adding some more fun things to this channel to give you a chance to make different projects. So I hope you stay tuned to my channel and I will see you here again next time on Jolly Molly TV where we go into video two on Kimberbell's adorable Two Scoops Bench Pillow Project. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.